Hello there everyone, Matt here with virtualinstructor.com and in this video we're going to talk about watercolor pencils. I'm also going to share with you a time lapse that was taken from seven recorded live lessons in which we create this wonderful drawing of a green bird on a red background. Now this complete lesson series is available in real time to members at thevirtualinstructor.com as well as all of the rest of our recorded live lessons our video courses on drawing and painting, which include videos and eBooks, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute, and a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers. Now, if you wanna check out our membership program, I'll leave a link in the description below, but I'm also going to give a free membership away to one of you guys in this video. All you have to do is watch the video all the way to the end, and I'll tell you how you can have a chance at winning a membership for a year. Now, in this video, we're gonna start by talking a little bit about watercolor pencils. I'm gonna share with te some techniques with you. And this video, of course, is from the first lesson in this lesson series. And then at the end, I'm gonna share with you a time lapse. It'll take you from the beginning of the process all the way to the end. And I'm gonna be doing some commentary and some instruction during that part as well. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. And the first thing, it, and I'm, I'm making the assumption that we've never used watercolor pencils before. And I just wanna talk a little bit about a few of the techniques that you can use to apply the color to the surface. First of all, the most obvious technique is just to uh, apply the, the color to the surface and then activate it. We'll do a different color here. We'll use a little bit of imperial purple here. Uh, so when you're applying the watercolor pencil to the surface, you'll notice that since this is cold pressed paper, it's very, very grainy. And just like we would with a regular pencil, I'm gonna release a little bit of the pressure. So I'm gonna lessen the pressure. And hopefully that will create a gradation of color when we activate it. Let's go ahead and make this just a little bit more intense up here. And then I'm gonna take my nylon brush and just add a little bit of water there on it. And then when we activate it, you can see it comes to life and turns into watercolor. Now what's really interesting about the watercolor pencils is that if you add just a little bit of water, so I'm getting a little bit of water on my brush and then wiping a little bit of the water off, if you get just a little bit of water, you can see that it's not quite as intense, but you have more control. And if you get a little bit more water, it's gonna be a little bit more intense, but you have less control. And we're just gonna go ahead and pull this out. And then towards the end, I'm gonna add a little bit of water and go back the other way to create a little bit of a gradation. Now, just like with regular watercolor, or traditional watercolor, I should say. We can lift the color. So if I wanna go up a little bit and lift it up with the paper towel. So we have a little bit of control, just like we do with traditional watercolor. You can see how easy it is to create a transition there. Now you're still gonna see a little bit of the graininess produced by the marks made by the pencil, but for the most part, if you work it a little bit, you can go ahead and eliminate a lot of those marks. That hot press texture does a lot to camouflage those marks. I can really, I guess because there's this, and you can see it on the very edge of your strokes, how there's a little bit of bleed out. Yeah. You know, the bleed out between two strokes that are next to each other really, I guess, um, help those strokes to, um, to just uh, bl to actually bleed together. And with the hot press, they don't have the little pits in the cold, as they do in the cold press paper, to follow and mingle into one another along their edges. Yeah, so those strokes are definitely more evident. So um, this is the cold press paper again, just to uh, reiterate that. All right, uh, so let's do a little bit of mixing here. Uh, so we're just going to layer. We're going to start here with, uh, let's do... Uh, Let's do a little bit of a transition here. So let me grab a blue here and uh, we'll just grab Spectrum Blue. I love the names of colors here. They're <laughs> in deep vermilion. Uh, so we'll try to create a purple here. So I'm gonna start here with the Spectrum Blue. And then as it's gonna, as we create that transition of purple in the middle, I'm gonna release a little bit up on the pencil. And then we'll grab the deep vermilion and go the opposite way. and allow some overlap here. 
And I'm not really sure how this blue and red is going to mix, but we'll see what happens here. So again, I'm just going to load the brush up again. And that blue, look at how intense it gets. And that's another mm -hmm. thing. Um, this is the color on the pencil, and this is the color on the paper. Looks so you, more like a cerulean blue to me. Yeah, you cannot go by the <laughs> the color on the pencil. That's why it's a good idea to kind of have a little bit of a test strip when you're working. And that's another drawback to working with uh, watercolor pencils is there is a little bit of a guessing game involved mm -hmm. in it because you're going to be layering colors, and you're going to have to... Think about a little bit about what what the colors might mix uh, before you apply it to the surface. So if, if you experiment a little bit with a, a test strip, of course, then you'll have a better idea of how they're going to behave. But I'm you know, thinking about that while, while you were laying down the, that bright blue. You know, it's not just the guessing game of how they might mix, but also of how much actual pigment to apply. Oh, What's yeah. the value going to be, you know, right. um, when you actually lay the water on it? So there's, uh, I guess, watercolor pencils reduce some of the challenge of watercolor painting, but present a few yeah, challenges they, of their own. Exactly. They bring their own challenges to the table. And in some aspects, they make it a little bit more difficult for some things. Uh, but one thing that they do bring to the table, as you can see here, is the intensity of color. A mm -hmm. lot of times when people use watercolor, the tendency is to paint really light. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are scared to put bold colors on, as I mentioned before, or the opposite. Some people will just put a very little amount of water on their brush and go right into that pan and... Uh, you know, they apply color that's way too intense. Um, you can see here, this this is a really nice intensity of color, but it's not really a super smooth transition between the colors. And the purple it creates, it's a purple. It's a little bit of a darker purple, but uh, you can see that I'm still relinquishing some control here in this gradation. Um, all right, and next, uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's, uh, let's try to create a value scale. Uh, with a color here. Let's see what would be a good color to create a value scale with. Uh, we'll just use a uh, blue here. Well, we've already got Prussian blue on the surface. Let's use the purple, the imperial purple, the co same color that we used before. So of course, when you work with watercolor, your light values are created by the white of the paper. So we have to think about how much of the white of the paper to allow to show through in order to create those lighter, those lighter values, those lighter tints. So I have to be real careful here and just put a very light application and then we'll get a little bit darker as we work our way down. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the color blue gray here. Let's see if I can find a blue gray. Now this is blue gray and it's uh, it's a darker color as you can see, but it also helps to make areas a little bit darker in value if the color has some type of relationship to blue. So this will work with greens and it will work with purples or it should work with purples here. So let's go ahead and activate that and see how dark we can get. And uh, that, you know what, uh, just for time's sakes, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of ivory black to the bottom here too. And black is so Ooh. strong, so strong. So I'm going to put a very light touch of ivory black on there. Um, all right, now we'll activate it. I've got a couple of good questions in the chat. Uh, we'll start with Judith's and we'll take these questions in the order in which they were received. So Judith's question is, uh, do they dry lighter like watercolor does? Now, I don't have a lot of experience with watercolor pencils. Um, I've, I've, I have a little. I've done two artworks with the pencils and a few with the watercolor crayons. And my experience was they do seem to feel like they dry a little bit lighter, just like regular watercolor. And I think that's just because things that look darker when they're wet. You know, the road looks darker when it's wet. My clothes that look darker when they're wet. And when I used to have hair, it looked darker when it's wet. So I think that uh, just take the, the gloss of the wet paint feel it makes the saturation feel a little bit higher. And another thing to keep in mind is it, what Ashley said is totally true that, you know, things are going to get a little bit lighter as they dry just because wet things do look darker. Mm -hmm. um, you could think of a, uh, a wet paper bag, for example. This could yeah, get considerably right. darker. Uh, but another thing to consider is the brand of watercolor pencil that you use. There are a lot of different brands out there. 
and some of them are not going to have as much pigmentation as the higher quality brands. Um, so that's another thing to consider on how light or dark it's gonna dry. And it's not gonna be anywhere near what we see with a medium like gouache. Gouache, oh, gouache yeah. really changes its value when it dries, yeah. um, which makes it really challenging. You have to plan sometimes. ahead for that. Uh, but it's not gonna be that drastic of a change, but it is gonna be very similar to traditional watercolor as you mentioned before. So that little bit of black that I added down there and that blue gray has really made a really nice deep purple. Uh, I'm not trying to bring up smoke on the water or anything <laughs> like that, but it did make a deep purple there. And uh, you can see it's pretty easy to create. In fact, I really like this color, really like this purple. Too bad it's not in our image. <laughs> I can't wait for everybody to see the image, though. Yes. Well, they could have already taken a peek True. by looking at the photo reference, which I think that's going to bring us. Let me make sure that I've covered everything that I wanted to cover here before we move on. Oh, there are other ways to apply the watercolor to the surface other than just applying it and then activating it so i'll show you that real quick one way obviously is just to take a little bit of the watercolor material off of the tip of the pencil so if you do want a less intense application all you have to do is take a little bit of water uh, moisten the tip here and then you can apply it just like traditional watercolor and you can see how much lighter that is of course the more you add to the surface the more intense it's going to be so we can use the pencil like it is a cake watercolor too and you see that's getting rather intense the more I apply it to the surface. And then, of course, we can create a little bit of a gradation. And we can even do a little bit of wet into wet. Let's see what happens there. Let's have a little bit of this red here. Let some bleeding happen. Now, M. King has a question, and uh, I know you're waiting patiently, and I appreciate that. I think your question is sort of the crux of, um, of, this, of this entire series in some way. And what is that question? Well, I, I don't want to keep you in suspense, Matt. Uh, M. <laughs> King's question is, uh, what, would, what would drive your decision to use watercolor pencils as opposed to just regular watercolor? Is it technique and application or an effect you are after with pencil you can't get with brushes? I think that's a really great question. I think that's a great question. And I think that's why I started things out by talking about all the different forms of uh, watercolor that are out there with all the different brands making watercolor pencils in different forms and watercolor crayons and so on. Um I, you know, the reason why we're using watercolor pencils for this series, I'll be honest with you, is because people want to know how to use watercolor pencils. Mm -hmm. And um, some people are going to be more comfortable holding a pencil in their hand. The fact of the matter is we learn how to write our name and uh, write other things as well with a pencil. And because that's one of the first things we learn as a child, it's something that's comfortable and familiar with us. Psychological exactly. in that way. Um, a brush is way more versatile than a pencil. You can make thin lines, you can make thick lines, you can do all kinds of stuff with a brush that you can't do with a pencil. But more people are more comfortable with a pencil in their hand. So if you're more comfortable with a medium, you're probably gonna have a higher level of confidence with it. And of course, you're gonna have maybe a higher success rate because of that confidence layer level. And to be honest with you, watercolor is one of those mediums that is heavily reliant on confidence. If you are not confident with your applications, it's gonna show in your watercolor, mm. uh, your watercolor images. So if the whole reason of using a watercolor pencil is to give you confidence, and give you a form of the medium so that you can apply it to the surface and feel like you're doing something that's not gonna be catastrophically wrong, then by all means use a watercolor pencil. But if you feel confident with watercolor paint, you definitely have more versatility by applying it with a brush and letting the watercolor be watercolor. 
So we started this drawing out using 2H graphite in a Stiedler lead holder on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. And you can see here I'm using a lot of siding and measuring, making comparisons to my heavily edited photo reference. I edited this photo reference in Photoshop, added the background, adjusted the colors and so on. And we cover this in this lesson series if you wanna take a look at that. And then once I had a looser sketch of the bird in place, I went back and refined some of the lines and then cleaned up the drawing with a kneaded eraser. Then of course the border is an important element in this composition so I went ahead and mapped out the border after I had the drawing of the bird in place because of course the border was going to be influenced or the size of the border was influenced by the positioning of the drawing of the bird on the paper. Now, of course, since we were going to paint the background red, we needed to protect the bird. So I used a, a little bit of liquid frisket here. This is a product called Misket by Grumbacher. And when it's applied, it allows you to apply watercolor right over the top of it and it protects what's underneath. So you can see I was able to paint the background red. And then once the watercolor had dried, I could remove the taped border and also the Misket revealing our protected drawing of the bird. And then, of course, it was time to start making watercolor pencil applications. And this, of course, is a slow process. It requires a lot of layering of colors. And throughout the process, you're going to want to be a activating these applications as you go. So you can see every time I go over the top of these watercolor pencil applications, I come in with a bit of water, and that's what I'm referring to as the activation process. That's basically turning the watercolor pencil into watercolor on the surface. And just like with a lot of watercolor paintings, you wanna take a layered approach. So you apply a bit of the watercolor pencil to the surface, activate it, and then once it's dry, apply another layer of watercolor pencil over the top. Now, when we use traditional colored pencils like the wax-based or oil-based colored pencils, layering is incredibly important in building up the depth of color that's required to create a representational image. And this is very true with the watercolor pencils as well. So you can see as we continue to layer applications, slowly the image becomes a little bit more uh, realistic and a little bit more believable. Now, something else you want to keep in mind is just like with traditional colored pencils, you want to be very careful with the color black. Black can make an image feel a little bit flat and unnatural. Um, so you want to be careful making your values a little bit darker. So you can see throughout this process, we're dealing with some cooler greens, some, some greens that are a little bit more blue green and some warmer greens, some greens that are a little bit more yellow green. So in the areas where we have the blue green, I'm using a little bit more of the darker blue to try to create darker values. And in the areas with the warm green, I'm incorporating a little bit of brown. I'm also using some of those blues in those areas as well, but looking for some of those darker yellow greens, of course. Now, now, in this particular case, I couldn't get all the values as dark as they needed to be just using the, the colors and avoiding black, of course. So I do use a little bit of black here and there, but for the most part, in the areas where I use black, um, you know, outside of the beak, I was taking the black from the tip of the pencil. And this, of course, made the applications a little bit less intense and gave me a little bit more control instead of just applying the black directly to the surface. So of course this led to a more believable result. Now, of course, when you are using watercolor pencils, um, there is a little bit of guesswork involved in this. So you do need to be aware to a certain degree of color theory. So you have to have a pretty good idea of what colors are going to be made when you mix colors on the surface. So in other words, uh, if you're trying to mix a cooler green, for example, since we're seeing this in this particular image, a blue green, then you're gonna need to know that blue and yellow obviously make green. And if you want that color to be a little bit cooler, you would add a little bit more blue to the surface. So uh, most of you guys probably have a good idea of color theory, but of course this is important when you're using a medium like this because you apply a bit of the material to the surface and then you really don't know what's going to happen or exactly how it's going to look until you activate it with water. So, of course, you can see this happening down here at the bottom where I'm layering a few different colors, in fact, three different colors in this lower part before activating it. But at this point, I have a pretty good idea of how these mixtures are going to turn out on the surface since we've been using essentially the same colors throughout the image. Now, the talons proved to be a little bit difficult here because uh, the colors that you see in the talons
talons are basically some of the same colors that we saw in the body, just to a lesser degree and a little bit more yellow, of course. So um, I used pretty much the same colors that I used on the body and just, as I mentioned, that lessened the intensity a little bit and also added a little bit more of the yellow in the mix, a little bit of yellow ochre. Now, I wasn't really sure how the values were going to pan out until we started addressing the branch because value is relative. We understand a value based on the values around it. So some of those shadowed areas down at the bottom of the bird, I wasn't quite sure at this point if they were dark enough. Um, and you really don't always know until you've got all the values in place. So as we started to work on the branch, we could make comparisons between the values that we had on the body of the bird and of course the values on the branch. And that allowed us to push the values as dark as they needed to be. So you can see here, I'm adding a little bit of black here to the bottom portion of the branch to create some of those stronger shadows. And you can see once these colors were activated, the mixtures turned out really nice and the black behaved down here and worked uh, in, a, in a way where the, the the image appeared a little bit more natural. But of course, as I mentioned before, there is a little bit of guesswork involved here uh, with watercolor pencils, and that makes it a little bit fun as well. So uh, if you like experimenting a little bit, you'll definitely love watercolor pencils if you've never used them before. And as you can see, the finished result very much resembles a watercolor painting, but the approach that we took is very, very different. So I would say that watercolor pencils are definitely their own unique medium. So after several different lessons, this was about six or seven hours, the watercolor pencil painting of our green bird was complete. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to pick up a couple of things here and there. Remember, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to the channel? We cover a broad variety of drawing and painting media and subjects here. It's absolutely free to subscribe, so click on that subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so you get notified whenever we upload a new video. If you want to check out three of our course videos and ebooks for free, you can do so. There's a link in the description below. Clicking on that link will take you to another page where you can enter your email address and get instant access to three of our course videos and the ebooks that correspond with those videos. And if you want to check out our membership program, again, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses and also weekly live lessons, weekly critiques as part of the Members Minute and the year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers, there's a link in the description below. You can check that out as well. Now, as promised, I'm going to give away a free year-long membership to one of you guys. All you have to do to be considered is in the comment section below this video, tell me why you either love or hate watercolor pencils. And I will choose one of those comments at random and in a few weeks, I will announce the winner here in a future YouTube video. And that person will have access to our membership program for an entire year for free. Thanks again for watching this video. As always, I wish you all the very best in your artistic success.